Psychopathic offenders may be rapists, child molesters, sadists, or any type of sex offender. They may not even be sex offenders, but engage in other forms of criminal or exploitive behavior instead. The hallmark of psychopathy is that the person doesn't have a problem in one area, such as sex, but has a pervasive lack of responsibility as well as a lack of attachment to other people. In this next section, Robert describes behavior that puts him in the category of power and controlled rapist, but doesn't necessarily tell us his problems are pervasive and that he has no capacity for attachment. That will come later. Yeah, it was power and control. I was grooming her from the age of, it started about the age of one. Uh, when I was the punisher, I was the, I was the one who decided punishment over the children. I was the one who spanked the children. I was the one who, who punished the children. And, and if I seen the children doing anything wrong, even bickering and arguing amongst themselves, I would whip them and tell them, you know, just just kids playing. I would I, I would tell myself, well. She's not going to be like that. She is going to be the perfect mate. And I told myself that. And I didn't molest her then. The perfect mate. The perfect so were... mate. I was grooming her to fit me. To fit me. And what, at what age? I started at about a year. I started grooming her, whooping her, and telling her this to do this, not do that. Then when I molested her at 18 months old. And I thought to myself, I said, well, this is, this is gonna be easy. This is gonna be easy. I'm gonna have my own child, my own stepdaughter, which is really not blood related to me. And I'm telling myself these things, it's not blood related to me. When she grows up to be 14, 15 years old, I will have the perfect sexual mate for sexual purposes. Anything else didn't matter. It was sex. That was it. I didn't care about, really, honestly, I didn't love the child. I wanted the child for my own purposes. I was, I was the one potty training her, okay? Uh, my wife let me potty train her. I potty trained her. And at the first, at, at the first when I was potty training her, I gave her a break. Every now and then she could use the bathroom in her pants. But I was setting her on that stool for sometimes hours at a time, telling her to use the bathroom there. She got, started doing it. She started using the potty. And then all of a sudden she would, I've been doing this for about, three, four months, and she got good at it, and then all of a sudden she would use the bathroom in her pants, and I would tear her hide up. I would actually put bruises on her butt by spanking her, by using the, bath using the bathroom in her pants. How'd you get a little kid to sit on the potty for hours? That's an awful long time. Yell and scream. Tell her you're going to use that potty, and you ain't going to get off that potty till you use that potty. Have you used the potty yet? No. You're going to sit there until you use it. And, 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 I, and as I look back, I was done that way, the same way she was done. How would you justify it in your head? How would I justify it in my head? She's going to do what I wanted to do, and that's it. She's going to use the bathroom. She's going to, uh, let's say, that I told her that Daddy loves her and daddy's going to take care of her. And daddy's going to give her anything she wants as long as she does what daddy tells her. I got married at 19, and I kind of like refrained, refrained from, or tried to refrain from sexually acting out with any other ladies besides her because I knew that AIDS was coming out and I knew that diseases were very frequent. And I started thinking to myself that uh, if I stick with this one girl and just groom her, or one woman, I would groom her and get her to do what I wanted her to do. 
and eventually she did. She done what I asked her to do. It was no problem. It was, it was a little at a time, and I done it, and I manipulated her and coerced her. Manipulation, coercion, violent behaviors, striking her, uh, 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 get her, get her so drunk she'd pass out, and I'd do what I want to with her. I'd force myself upon her when she was passed out and did what I pleased. Uh, and my sexual behavior got real, real out of, out of whack. Uh, yeah, I made her force objects into her vagina. I uh, made her, uh, forced her into uh, watching pornographic material and stating that I wanted to do that certain thing to her. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to have sex with her uh, constantly. This was a, every day. Every day, three or four times, I would get it, want it as many times in the day as I could get it. And I have got it up to six times in one day. And still, still, I did not have enough. I wanted more. It was like a fix. I wanted it. And I did every, anything I could to get it. And how many victims did you have total? I have a total of, uh, of 24 now. And I'm looking to see if I have any more. And were these, you said these were all kids except two? No. Oh, yeah, well, they were under the age of 18. Most of my victims were the age of 11 to 16. And how did you get control of them? Was it through force and control and violence? It was manipulate. No, it wasn't violence. It was, it was more like manipulation. It was coercion. It was like, uh, uh, I'll buy you this. I'll give you that. You know, and treating them like a person, but they were just objects. They were just objects. I was doing anything in my power to get them to give sex up, to give it up. And that's what I used to tell them. I said, give it up, you know. After I would have done, say, groomed them up, and then I would and they would comply. I would use, I would buy them beer, get them drunk, get them high, get them, uh, uh, any way that I could manipulate a woman or a girl, I mean a, a child, into having sex, I would do it. In this section, you will see the lack of attachment to anyone that suggests Robert is not only a power and control sex offender, he is quite psychopathic as well. The best way to fool people is to help them, is to uh, ask what they want, ask what they need. Do they need any help doing anything? Do they, do, uh, uh, do they need any money or do they need their car fixed? Do they need the grass cut? Do they need uh, their children looked out for? Do they need uh, uh, a job? Do they need uh, anything, anything to get them to think that I am a decent person and want to help, trust me, I will help. And overall, that, that, that was a flat out lie. Why do you think it makes people so trusting? Oh, what do you mean, as far as trusting? Trusting you. Trusting me? Because I think, you know, uh, to trust me, I thought that, that I could be trusted to a certain extent. And, and, but by, behind, their, on the, behind their back, no. I would take things from them, steal from them, scope out things that I could steal, uh, uh, just see what I could get out of somebody. Uh, just get what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I see something I want to get somebody to trust me. Like, say, if I was to go over and cut this person's grass, uh, fix his car, loan him some money, and then he, and, and if I see something I want, like he's got a nice stereo, then, and I would set it up. I would say, hey, well, he's not home at such and such a time. Uh, that'd be the perfect time to go get me a stereo. So I would say, hey, he's gone. I know exactly how to get in through the back way. 
I'll even go into his house and open a window so I can come in here tomorrow and steal his stereo. I was looking out for number one, for me. I didn't have any empathy for anybody else because it seemed to me nobody had any empathy for me. I wasn't going to give anybody any empathy that didn't give it to me. And that was it. That was bottom line. You, you don't, uh, I didn't have people cry for me or, or, or tell me, ask me if I needed anything. Uh, then, you know, I wouldn't use any empathy. I would fake it. Now, fake empathy, like saying, I know how you feel. I've been in that situation before. I've done that, and it didn't turn out all that hot. And, and I would fake it, but there wasn't no empathy there. That was just a show. That was just a tell. That was just to get the person to say, well, hey, you know, he, he seems like he's pretty, pretty good fellow. And, you know, that, that was manipulation all the way.